Hello, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. In today's video, we will be reviewing for the 2022 Texas Star Math Test for fourth graders. Our concept is fractions review, and yes, this is part six. Remember fourth graders, every day may not be good, but there is something good in every day. We have our fourth grade math and reading review workbooks available for purchase in our store. The links will be in the description box so that you can grab yours today. Do you need a math or reading tutor? We offer virtual one-on-one -on -one and group tutoring for second to eighth grade students. Parents, there is a link in the description box for you to sign up for a free 30-minute consultation. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, and smash that like button so that you will be alerted to new videos we upload and also spread the word about Hype Math. We greatly appreciate your support. So let's review adding fractions. We have on our far left side a circle that is divided into five equal parts and two of those parts are shaded. My fraction is two fifths plus our second or middle circle has five equal parts as well and one is shaded. My fraction is one fifth. Because my denominators are the same, all I need to do is add my numerators and keep the denominator. Two plus one is equal to three, so three fifths is my answer. Now, let's look at another example. We have 4 twelfths plus 3 sixths. Now, whenever we're adding or subtracting fractions, our denominators must be the same. Okay, let me say it again. When we are adding and subtracting denominators, fractions, our denominators must be the same. So I need to change my denominator for six, three, six, because it has a denominator of six and four twelfths has one of 12. In order to do that, I must find the least common multiple or least common denominator for 12 and six, and the answer is 12. So now I need to find the equivalent fraction of 3 6. In order for me to do that, I know that my fraction, for my equivalent fraction, the denominator has to be 12. So I'm going to ask myself, what number multiplied by 6 is equal to 12? And the answer is 2. Now that I know it's 2, I am going to multiply my numerator and denominator by 2. Remember, you have to do it for the top and the bottom or the numerator and denominator. Multiplying my numerators going across, 3 times 2 is equal to 6. And in my denominator, 6 times 2 is equal to 12. So now my equivalent fraction is 6 twelfths. I can move forward with adding my fractions. So 4 twelfths plus 6 twelfths equals, all I need to do is focus on my numerator because my denominators are the same. 4 plus 6 is equal to 10 and I keep my denominator of 12. Now, whenever I'm adding and subtracting fractions, I need to find my simplest or smallest fraction or you'll see the directions say reduce to the smallest fraction, okay? Well, 10 twelfths is not the smallest fraction because they have both a greatest common factor of two. So now what I'm going to do to reduce my fraction is divide both 10 and 12 by two. Starting with my numerator, 10 divided by two is equal to five, and 12 divided by two is equal to six. Five, six is my answer, okay? Now, let's look at our bottom fractions. We have three-fifths plus two-fifths. Now, since my denominators are the same, all I need to do is add my numerators. Three plus two is equal to five, and my fraction is 
five fifths or five over five. Now, one trick that I want to tell you a little hack is fractions are really the fraction bar is really division. So what I'm really saying is what is five divided by five? And that is equal to one. That is how I am able to, in reducing my fraction, put that five fifths is equal to one. Okay, let's look at another example. We have five eighths plus seven eighths. Well, my denominators are the same, so all I need to do is add my numerators. Five plus seven is equal to 12. 12 so 12 eighths is my answer. Whenever you have a numerator with a value greater than the denominator, that is called an improper fraction. So I need to reduce my fraction. Well, how are you gonna do that, Ms. Jackson? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the, this fraction. Taking my denominator, eight, I'm going to find eight over eight for one of my fractions because we know that that is equal to one plus four over eight because eight plus four is 12. So now my fraction, which was an improper fraction, is a mixed number, which means I have a whole number and a fraction. Eight over eight is one, and then we have four eighths. So one and four eighths is my answer. Are we done? Well, of course not, because we still need to reduce four eighths. How do I do that? I need to find the greatest common factor between four and eight, and that is four. So now what I need to do is divide four in my numerator and my denominator. Starting with my numerator, four divided by four is equal to one, and eight divided by four is equal to two. So my final answer, finally, <laughs> is one, and one half, okay? So that is how we add fractions with same denominators, unlike or different denominators, and also how do I simplify or reduce my fractions? Let's dive into question number 27. And remember, our fourth grade math book is available for purchase in our store. Miss Owens ordered two foot long sandwiches for her three children to share. The picture shows the two sandwiches cut in half. Each child ate half a sandwich. Which fraction represents the number of sandwiches the children ate? Is it three, I mean, I'm sorry, is it F, three halves, G, two thirds, H, four halves, or J, three, six? Well, in order to solve this problem, the first thing we need to do is ask ourselves, what are we looking for? We are looking for the fraction representing the number of sandwiches that the children ate. Now that we know that, our next most important question is, well, what information can help us find the answer? The information that can help us find the answer is that Miss Owen ordered two foot long sandwiches for her three children and that each children ate half a sandwich. Since we know the information to help find the answer, well, how do we solve the problem? What we need to do is add together how much her three children ate. And we know that each, ch each child ate half of a sandwich. So what we're going to do is add one half plus one half plus one half, okay? Since my denominators are the same, all I need to do is add my numerators together and keep the denominator. One plus one plus one is equal to three and my numer denominator, sorry, my denominator stays the same, which is two, so three halves is my answer. Well, what is my correct answer? All we need to do is look at our answer choices to see which one has three halves as the solution. And I bet you already see it. Yes, it is F. F is our correct answer. The fraction representing the number of sandwiches Miss Owen, Owen's children ate is three halves. 
Let's look at number 28. Greg sorted his collection of baseball cards. Which statement is true? Okay, so let's look. Greg will give one fifth of his collection to his brother. Greg will sell four tenths of his collection to a card shop. And we're trying to find out which statement is true. Is it A, Greg will have exactly half his collection left? B, Greg will sell more than half his collection to a card shop? C, Greg will have less than half his collection left? Or D, Greg will give more than half his collection to his brother. In order for us to solve the problem, you already know our most important question is, what are we looking for? We are looking for the statement or the answer choice that is true. Now that we know that, what information do we need in order to solve this problem? Well, we need to know that one, Greg gave one fifth of his collection to his brother and also he sold four tenths to a card shop. Now that we know that, how are we going to solve the problem? We need to add the two fractions together and then we need to compare the answer choices. So first, let's add the fractions. Remember, we are adding our fractions one fifth plus four tenths. Since the, since the denominators are different, I need to find the least common multiple or least common denominator. You'll see LCM or LCD, okay? So that means I need to find the least common denominator, which is 10. Here you see that we have our um, multiples of five and also of 10 and the least, which means the smallest multiple that both five and 10 share is 10. So now I can find my equivalent fraction of one fifth where my denominator is 10. And look over to the left-hand side, right below where it says step one. That is where we do that. We need to ask ourselves, what number times five is equal to 10? Because that's going to be my new equivalent fraction, right? So it's two. I'm going to multiply my numerator and denominator by two. Starting with my numerators, one times two is equal to two. And five times two is equal to 10. So my new, my equivalent fraction for one fifth is two tenths. Now, since both of my denominators are the same, I can add two tenths plus four tenths is equal to six tenths, okay? So we know that that is the fraction that represents the number of cards that Greg gave to his brother and also sold to his card shop. So our step two is we need to start comparing the answer choices. Let's get started with A. Okay, for A it said Greg will have exactly half his collection left. So we know that half is five tenths. That's our step one. Step two, in order for us to see if he will have half left, what we need to do is subtract our total, the total number of our collection, which is 10 over 10, minus how many he sold, and that is six tenths. So 10 over 10 minus six over 10, since our denominators are the same, we are going to subtract 10 minus six, that is equal to four. So now for step three, we need to compare. Is six tenths, oh, we need to, see if he sold exactly half of his collection. And you see Miss Jackson made a mistake. So let's correct it during the live, okay? Instead of six tenths, what I should have is five tenths because it said that he would have exactly half of his collection left. And we know that half means five tenths, but when we subtract, we see in step two, he actually only has Four tenths left. Is five tenths equal to four tenths? No, it is not. Let me change this one too. So we know that F is not correct, okay? 
we know that F is not correct. I mean, A is not correct. Y'all see Miss Jackson messing up. A is not correct. Now, let's go to B. For B, it says, Greg will sell more than half of his collection to a card shop. Okay, we already know we need to find our equivalent fraction for half with 10 in the, the denominator. That is 5 tenths. So, Greg sold 4 tenths to the card shop. And we are asking ourselves, did he sell more than half of his collection to the card shop? So is four tenths greater than five tenths? Or another way to say it is four greater than five? No, it is not. So B is not correct, okay? Because four tenths is not greater than five tenths. So let's look at C. C says Greg will have less than half his collection left. Okay, so we know that half means five tenths. And for step two, we know we needed to find out how much of Greg's collection he will have left. And that is four tenths because again, he sold, um, he gave, uh, so half to, he sold some to the car shop, which is four tenths. And then he gave, um, two tenths to his brother, that equals six tenths. So 10 over 10 minus six over 10 is equal to four tenths. That is how much he will have left. And is four tenths less than five tenths? Yes, it is. So we know that C is correct. Okay. Even though we know that C is correct, let's go over D as well. Greg will give more than half his collection to his brother. Well, we know that half of the collection is five tenths, but we need to find out what is the equivalent fraction for one fifth with the denominator of 10. One fifth times two over two is equal to 10, two tenths, and we have already solved that in the top right hand corner. Is two tenths greater than five tenths? Well, no, it is not. So what is our correct answer? We have went over A, B, C, and D, and we've shown and proven which ones are incorrect and which one is correct. So C is our correct answer. Greg will have less than half his collection left. Great job. And that is it, fourth graders, for our fractions review part six. Wow. If you haven't seen part one through five, go ahead and it will help you to have a stronger foundation in fractions. If you need a math or reading tutor, parents can sign up with the link in the description box. Also, we have our fourth grade math and reading review workbooks available for purchase in our store. This is Shay Jackson with Hype Math. I will talk to you later.